Greetings, true believers, and welcome to another Dan Dashley Discusses Trade Talk, the time of week where we take a look at individual trades and hardcovers off of my shelf. This week, I have something super, super exciting for you, one of my all-time favorite comics, and that is Paul Tobin and Colleen Coover's Bandette. If you're looking for an all-age book to give your son, daughter, or whatever in between, Bandette is the book for you, about a young girl and her mission to become the world's greatest thief. Well, I say her mission to become, but hey, she's already the world's greatest thief, so there's really nothing to uh, to really become for her. She has <clears throat> this uncanny ability to pull off almost any heist that she puts her mind to, all while helping the, her common man, helping the police put some criminals behind bars, and stealing a few hearts along the way, too. It's really a phenomenal book. I'm going to dive right into this. First and foremost, what I, talk, what I want to talk about in terms of the trade is how amazingly sized it is. This is like a perfect children's book size, and that's really what this is for. You give this to your five- or six-year-old, and boom, they're going to be able to put in their backpack, take it to school, and be either the coolest kid or the least popular kid because, you know, they're reading comics. And what weirdo reads comics these days, right? <clears throat> So let's just dive right in. First and foremost, Bandit manages to be funny right off the bat. Acquired by whoever, sort of poking fun at the fact that she's a gentleman, or rather a lady thief, sort of already off the bat, telling you what this book's going to be about. I don't want to mention too much about the plot, since Bandit is a rather an interesting read, and I think that you should do that for yourself. So what I'm going to talk about is, honestly, the quality of this book, sort of how... You can, what you can expect from Bandette and really some of the more minor things, art, writing, stuff like that. Uh, first and foremost, since it's a small book, that means absolutely no gutter loss. A small book on top of these uh, nice separations of the pages from the middle that prevents, you know, part of this panel from being right in the middle there. Hard to read in the gutter is what we call it in comic book terms. I, I vastly appreciate any book that doesn't do that. Uh, so that's really what we're getting from this book right off the bat. <clears throat> uh, in terms of Art Bandette manages to capture that sort of, I guess, 30s, 40s French pop and ad art style from back in those days. Um, if, you're, if you're familiar with the uh, Karaskota's uh, um, Miss Don't Touch Me, or maybe Beauty, or some of her work on Beautiful Dark, or some of their work on Beautiful Darkness, uh, you know kind of the art style that I'm really talking about. is. Oh, really nice. We have our police chief talking with his subordinate and just some random street urchin. You feel like you could pick those people right off the streets of Paris, but obviously some parts are exaggerated enough to keep it entertaining for the children and the adults as well, which is a trait that Bandit as a book has in spades. While there's going to be a lot of moments where your son, daughter, niece, nephew <clears throat> is going to read this book and be super excited just about what she's doing, where she's going, the action, things like that, and the comedy. There's a lot of physical comedy in this book as well. While those are certainly there to keep, you know, your son, small child, daughter at bay, uh, it, there are instances where there are more subtle jokes and going-ons for, you know, adults, people, mine, and your ages. And there are some overarching, or there are some larger themes going on in the book that might be, you know, a little bit more serious uh, than what maybe a child would pick up on. Nothing that you'd be, I guess, scared to show them, but little instances uh, with Ben that, you know, maybe kissing Daniel, her lead, I guess, street urchin subordinate, uh, kissing him, sort of the back-and-forth flirtatious attitude uh, that they have. Maybe that might be lost on your five- or six-year-old, but it certainly would be entertaining to you as an adult. I assume maybe you're not into that, but as far as I go, uh, their back-and-forth is very interesting to me specifically. Um, and and some instances, like, you know, the actual... So, some context for this scene is the Matador and Bandetta are basically fighting to the death in sort of the most playfully fun way that these two young girls who are considered some of the best at what they do, that being thievery and assassinations, uh, can really have. They're, they're having 
lots of fun with it that's going to keep people engaged but at the same time you know if you really look into it these two girls are kind of locked in a rather dangerous situation obviously bandette wouldn't kill her but let me tell you, Matador would certainly uh, kill Bandette if she had the chance in this little back and forth. Maybe she'd regret it later, but it, it's really a situation where um, they're, neither one of them is truly taking it seriously. And that's really one of the main things about Bandette as a book. From her catchmark phrase of presto uh, to sort of the nonchalant way that she pulls off these daring, daring crimes. <clears throat> just to the way that she handles even this more serious gentleman thief trying to teach her uh, what is really going on in the world and how to be a better thief. Uh, there's no sense of, I guess, levity in anything Bandit does, anything she perceives in the world around her, and anything, I guess, and anything really involved in this book if she had her way. Uh, she's a very no-nonsense, fun character, acting as if she's pulled right off the pages of maybe David Copperfield. Uh, just sort of a type of character where everything works out for her, and she knows that, and she almost expects that to happen. She treats her life as if she is the protagonist of a piece of classic literature in which the hero will constantly come out on top. Since that happens, since there's no moment to really prove her otherwise, why would she think any differently? And even at the very end, she doesn't add too much seriousness to her overall way of doing things. She will always sort of be this no, this, uh, this <clears throat> nonsense-filled character, and that's really what you grow to love about Bandette. There's no over... You're not going to get sort of the serious levels that you might get out of some other thief or uh, book like that or anything might that would be dealing with murder and world-renowned gangs that are doing things like sex trafficking and art trafficking and murder and assassinations. While other books might take that and say, hey, here's why the world is awful, here's why people are bad, here are bad people doing things to good people, you should hate them. Uh, Bandette covers that there are those bad people and that bad things do happen, but that there will always be this sort of idea of a character like Bandette existing to constantly foil them, to bring a lighthearted smile to an overly serious situation. Uh, and to be perfectly frank, that isn't really tied just to Bandette, uh, Mansoor, um, my French is awful, uh, who is sort of her, her rival and isn't afraid of giving her sort of mentory type information, uh, also truly, truly enjoys what he does. A gentleman who is a thief only for the thrill of the chase, uh, and it goes to show that even in this world where there are bad men doing bad things to good people. There are also people that will commit crimes just to have fun uh, and maybe not take it quite so seriously. It is important to point out that Bandette traditionally only steals from people who are already uh, committing crimes. Uh, for instance, the very start of this book, we have her stealing from a very well-known arms dealer uh, and rather comedically catching herself in a situation uh, that is not too good for her. So even sort of the negative things that Mansoor and Bandette do, even those have a very good purpose behind them, which is a very good uh, really lesson to give children that Obviously, you shouldn't encourage your children to steal, uh, but you should encourage them to try and make the world a better place through whatever their specific talent set is, which happens uh, to be thievery and Bandette and Montessori's case. I should also note at the end of this book, since Bandette's kind of a short series, um, honestly, there's nine books out right now, none of which I think clock in over at 20, over 23 pages. Uh, so again, that makes it a really excellent read for children. If you're trying to just get them into reading, boom, right off the bat, you've got a very short book. Um, to pad out these trades, there are these urchin stories, um, which are sort of different writers and artists take on the different characters in the Bandit universe. Here we um, have a Jennifer Meyer uh, take on Pinto, which is Bandette's dog. Uh, obviously, beautiful, beautiful art. Um, Paul Tobin is kind of in this place as a creator where he can pull in some rather large names. For those of you who don't know, um, I guess 
if I'm going to name one Paul Tobin piece that I would call his most popular, I guess I would say Marvel Adventure Spider-Man uh, is certainly probably what I know a lot of people know him from. But Paul Tobin is a, 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 a giant in the industry as far as I'm concerned. He's made some of the most fun, enjoyable, all-ages books around uh, and certainly is no stranger to doing more adult books as well. But I think where he shines is certainly books like this. Uh, where you can have a lot of fun. Uh, so that is uh, the first Bandette trade. Uh, I will uh, point out um, that Bandette also has a second trade. Now this one I'm not going to go too far into detail with since it's much the same. Uh, obviously different color themes with the blue and the orange, which is always nice. Um, still the lack of gutter loss because of page spacing. Uh, still the beautiful, beautiful Colleen Coover art. Uh, still the amazing and hilarious Paul Tobin writing. Uh, this one is obviously a bit shorter in terms of the content that ties to the main Bandette story, uh, if only because of the fact that there aren't that many uh, really stories uh, issues out there as of right now. So we have a lot more urchin tales, uh, which are always quite fun. Uh, here's another one about Pimento, uh, who is very constantly uh, a source of good comedy, him being somewhat of a of a heart stealer, just as Bandette is. Uh, so I guess it's true that people's dogs tend to look and act a little bit uh, like themselves. So this second trait is certainly enjoyable as well. Neither one of these you'll be very disappointed with, with your for your own personal enjoyment or for just giving them to any child in your life or just anyone that you want to get into lighthearted all ages books. I think Bandette is the pinnacle of what all ages books should be right now. It is fun. It has enough action to keep it interesting, to keep it interested. It has art styles that aren't just conforming to a house style. It has very unique art styles that capture classic art. Kids will look at this book and say, hey, I want to see more things visually like Bandette. <coughs> check out more classic art. Or they may say, I want to read more classic literature in the same style as Bandette. And that will also get them to check out more books. And certainly, if they like Bandette, they'll be interested in more comics. And honestly, that is what I look for when I look at an all-ages book. Uh, and Bandette delivers that in spades. I might also point out that these books are relatively cheap. Uh, $14.99. I'm sure you can find them at a deal at your local comic book shop or on Amazon, whatever. Uh, remember, <clears throat> certainly to support books like this that are amazing. Um, one thing I wanted to point out, though, going back to my point that I think Bandette is really the pinnacle of what uh, of what all ages books should be, is that this book was quite robbed in the most recent Eisner Award. Um, Bandette didn't win any of the uh, accolades that it should have. Uh, and if I'm being uh, perfectly frank, uh, <clears throat> Bandette uh, is miles ahead of even similar books. Uh, a book by the name of Lumberjanes certainly uh, gets a lot of credit right now for being uh, incredibly progressive for the female audience uh, and being a good point for children and teenagers to jump on to comic books. Um, I submit to the people saying that Bandette does it bigger, does it better, and manages to create situations in which you actually care about what Bandette as a character is doing and what issues she is facing. Uh, there are no moments in either of these trades where you look at it and say, well, Bandette is just going to get out of this situation anyway, so why should I care? Which is an issue that I have with a lot of all-ages books. When you don't build up the appropriate amounts of tension, uh, you start to not care about what a character will do because you know that they're going to get out of it regardless. And while that does happen to Bandette often, in fact, she gets out of almost every single scrape uh, rather unfazed, the fact that she does it with such style, grace, panache, and as she would say, presto, that really makes it interesting to read. It's not about how is it's not about is Bandette going to get out of this situation or not. It's how much style is Bandette as a character going to deliver to getting out of this situation. So there you have it. This has been trade talk uh, about Bandette. Uh, if you like this, go to my YouTube channel, Dan Dashley Discusses. I've got tweets about that all over. Uh, it's <clears throat> always great to have listeners out there. If you want me to cover uh, any trades, I'll certainly do my best. If you have any suggestions, um, 
watch my reviews, give hearts, follows, likes, comments, subscribes, whatever the hell uh, Twitter has you doing for Periscope. Give all the things to me uh, so that I can have them and so more people can see these. Um, so uh, until next week when we do another one of these trade talks, I will see you next time, true believers. Remember, go out, read Bandet, uh, tweet at Paul Tobin, be all like, hey, Bandet's the greatest all-ages comics ever, because uh, I certainly think that it is. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and have a good one.